Hi everyone. Today uh, we are going to discuss about a data share using Azure Databricks Delta Share mechanism. We are mainly be focusing on the Delta tables and how we can share that Delta table from Azure Databricks platform to the external user. So what we can think of this share that we are talking about is just like a bucket where we basically have you know multiple objects. Now that objects can either be notebook or a table, and that bucket we can basically share it with anyone, uh, you know, externally or internally. So let's look into the documentation. So if we look at this diagram, and this is exactly what happens in Delta sharing. So we basically have a Delta table, and then we have the Unity catalog where we do provide the access on the share, and then we use the Delta sharing protocol, and this Delta sharing protocol is being used by Azure Databricks, and using this feature, the data is being shared to any external user. So this is how it happens. So as I was explaining that you know, Unity Catalog is the integral part of this whole architecture, we need to have the Unity Catalog enabled in that workspace. Otherwise, we won't be able to use this feature. There are two ways we can you know, share the data. One is open sharing, and another one is Databricks to Databricks sharing. For open sharing, what happens that in the source side, who is the data provider, they are going to use the Databricks environment, but it is not mandatory that the target audience or the data recipients use the Databricks environment. They buy any client tool. For example, they can use Tableau, Power BI, normal VS Code. And for the other one, Databricks to Databricks sharing, uh, what's going to happen that, you know, we are basically sharing the table from one Databricks workspace to a different Databricks workspace. Now that different Databricks workspace might be in the same organization, or it might be in a different cloud or in the, in the demo first, we're going to look into the Databricks to Databricks sharing method. And later part, we are going to look into the open sharing method. I have one Databricks environment and this data, the test user one is going to be the data provider. And similarly, I have another Databricks environment where I am admin at the rate, the domain name is the data is, you know, is the recipient of the, uh, of this use case. Now, what we are going to do, what I have done uh, before this demo, I have created two Databricks workspaces uh, at the primary side, at the data provider side, and also at the data recipient side. And I have enabled the Unity catalog and created two separate Unity catalog and added those workspaces into those Unity catalog. So those, uh, those prerequisite I have already completed. There's one more important thing to be noted that when we are at the data provider end, we, by default, the delta sharing will not be enabled. So we need to go ahead and enable the delta sharing. Okay, I have logged into my uh, you know, Databricks admin account and I'm getting into the admin console. And from the admin console, what I'm going to do, I'm going to enable the data delta sharing feature for my Metastore. So let me do that. So I'm in the admin console right now. I would be getting into my fast Metastore. This is the Metastore that is being used by the data provider. And it is already checked in the enable delta sharing to allow Databricks user to share data outside their organization. So I have already enabled this, so that is there. So we are good in this. Now I'm quickly getting to my data provider account. So test user one is the data provider. Okay, I have already created few tables. In my test DB, I have so many tables. So flight underscore data is the table that I would like to share with the data recipient. We are going to look into the Databricks to Databricks delta sharing mechanism, right? So when I'm at the data provider end, I really need to understand where I would like to send the data. So for that, I need to get that unique ID of the Unity Catalog Metastore where I would like to uh, share the data. Data recipient side, uh, what we are first going to do, we are going to look at the Metastore ID, uh, the unique ID of the Metastore, and we are going to supply that ID to the data provider. So data provider needs to understand in which Metastore you know, we need to send the data. So as we can see, like, you know, when we do the select current underscore meta store, we get a ID similar to this, like Azure, then, you know, we are going to have a colon, West US, and then we are going to have the meta store ID. I'm at the data providers, uh, uh, you know, workspace. Uh, what we are going to do next, we are going to create the recipient uh, in, the, in the provider side. So then we have already collected uh, the unique ID of the meta store that the recipient is using, and we are just going to create a recipient here. So let me just, you know, create it. And this delta share new is going to be our, uh, you know, share bucket, right? And th in this bucket, we are going to put few tables and notebook, 
that we would like to share with our data recipient. So let me just create this. All right, so it's created. The next thing that we'd like to do, we have created the bucket or the share, and we have already created the recipient. Now we would like to give the recipient access over that bucket, right? So let me just do that. That's all the step that we need to do, right? So now we basically have a container or a bucket. The recipient does have access here. But what we need to do, we need to add few objects in that bucket or in that share. Then get into the delta sharing. And we'll get into our delta share new share bucket. And here, uh, you know, this is something that we have created. What we are going to do, we are going to add some table, right? So let me just add few tables. So I, I need to give the source catalog and the table name that I would like to do. So let me just add flight table. And then I would be adding one notebook. So probably the notebook that I was running, I'll just add, it, add that notebook so that the data receiver can look into that notebook as well. So let me just select this. The data recipient said what we need to do, we need to create a catalog where we can basically fit in those share bucket or the container that we have. Right, so for that, we can just do it from the UI. Also, we can do it from the SQL statement. So what we are doing, so we, I'm just creating one catalog here. So you create catalog if not exists. Let's say share data catalog and let me just put new. And using share my organization delta share test, I think this was also new. Now, let me just tell you about this. Now, this part is the provider. And this part is the CN name. Now, what is the provider? Now, this is going to be our, you know, organization name. Now, if I just, if, if we are not sure about what would be the organization name, what we can do, we can just get into the data. And then we can get into the delta sharing. And, you know, because the linkage was already created at the data provider end. Hence, we would be able to see those linkages coming here. So my own organization. And then if I just click the, click this, I would be able to see this delta test underscore new that got added here. The next thing that I need to do, I need to create a catalog. So catalog is basically a, um, a placeholder in the data recipient side where all the senders or the data providers object can fit in, right? So, th so this is something I can do it from, uh, you know, in the UI, but uh, just for the timing, we'll get into the SQL mode. So let's create this. I'll just create this one. God share data catalog underscore new as one more catalog uh, in my uh, meta store so i'll get into the meta store so this is my secondary meta store now i got this share data ca catalog underscore new and i'm able to see the database now this database is not something that we is created in the data recipient side that was created in the data provider side and flight data was the table that was being shared. able to see this data uh, from that share catalog new in the secondary meta store in the data recipient side like this is the catalog that we have and these are the schemas that that are being shared also in the other asset side we would be able to see the notebook that was being shared from the data provider end so if you click the notebook we would be able to get a read only version of the uh, of the notebook because we can just see it's a view only thing right we won't be able to edit it we'd like to add few uh, let's say one more table uh, into that delta share bucket that we have and we'd like to see if it is getting reflected, reflected instantaneously at the data recipient side or not. So for that, what I'm going to do, I'll get into the data and then the delta sharing that we have. And this is something I'm doing it at the data provider uh, data provider end. So I'll go to get into my share bucket. And this is the only one table that I have. I'll get into the edit table. And then I'll quickly click on the other table that I have. So I'll just save it. So now what happened, two tables is, are being shared and one notebook is being shared. Now I'll get into my receiver side and let me see, you know, initially I was able to see only one table and I, now I could see just in a matter of second, I, I'm able to see the another table that came in, right? So that's how, you know, we would be able to share the, uh, you know, Delta table or notebooks um, from one Databricks environment to the another Databricks environment. The other, you know, this both the Databricks environment can be in different region, can be associated with different cloud provider, the next thing that we would like to do, we'd like to do the open sharing protocol uh, that that we have in the Delta Share, uh, you know, feature. So here, you know, we are not going to have any uh, data recipient in Databricks. Ra rather than that, we would like to have it uh, in in some different clients. For example, I'm going to use Power BI 
as client one or the consumer one and VS code as data consumer two. And we'd like to see like, you know, how quickly we can, uh, you know, share the data. So for that, I'll get into my data provider and quickly I'll get into the sender delta share notebook that we have. Most of the steps that we had in the DataVix to DataVix delta sharing uh, mechanism that is going to be same for the open protocol method. So in the open setting, again, what we are doing, we are just creating one more recipient called create recipient if not exists, open data consumer one. So let me just create two and some other comments we can provide. Okay, so now a different data consumer got created or the recipient got created, but this time I do not have the unique ID of the meta store. This is basically signifying that, you know, I'm not going to receive the data in Databricks. Rather than that, I'm going to receive it in somewhere else. Now, once we do that, the next thing that we would like to do, this is similar to what we did in, in our previous use case. We'd like to give this account permission over the share, data share account that we have created. I think our data share account name was Delta Share Test. We are going to give the access to this account here. Okay, so this is done. Now I have one more user in the data provider and call open data consumer two, who is going to access the Delta share test underscore new. One thing to be noted, uh, previously we were able to share the notebooks uh, from the data provider to the data recipient. But in this open sharing method, we'll only be able to share the data, which is in form of table. We will not be able to share the notebook. We need to get an activate token, right? So this is something we'd be able to see like when we describe this recipient like this, let's say I we, we had data recipient two. So in Databricks, we would be able to see an activation link. Now this link can be provided by the data provider to any data recipient site. Right? This is not the URL by which you know anybody would be able to access the data. What we need to do next, we need to go ahead and you know download the credential, right? So this is how we you know we can download this credential. Now this can be done once. So that means that link that we got from Databricks that is valid for only one click. So now let me just download this credential file. And now I can see this config one dot share got downloaded. Now what we are going to have in this file, we're just going to have a bearer token and the endpoint. For our fast data consumer, what we're going to do, we are going to use Power BI as our client one or the data consumer one. So let me open Power BI. I'll go to the get data. I'll click on more and then I need to search with Delta share. So let me give the endpoint. So once this is there, the next thing that we need to provide the bearer token. So all these, uh, you know, credential, we would be able to get it from that, from that config file that got downloaded from the activation link. We'll be able to see the files, uh, the, the tables that was being shared from the data providers and anyone, anyone can just, you know, do the reporting just using, uh, you know, an endpoint and the BRF token. So in the VS code, delta, delta underscore sharing, you know, this is the PIF install that we need to do. Uh, this is the client SDK that has been provided by the Delta share. Now profile file is the one where we basically have the config, like the BRF token uh, and the URL, the endpoint, URL endpoint that we have. So we're creating a client and then we are just trying to list down the tables that we have. So let's just do this. So as we can see, like, you know, uh, the user basically has access over flight data and this is the share uh, that is being used. This is the schema and these are the tables where I do this user or the bearer token has access, right? So let's say I would like to use the flight data uh for the next portion of the script so table url and we just need to provide the delta share account name then the database name and the table name i think this would be remain same let me just put it here as well i'm just printing it and i'm just printing the first 10 lines uh, of the table so let me just use this attaching the github link for this script uh, in the description window so 
as we can see, we are able to see the data. So, so this is how uh, using these two different methods, one is like Databricks to Databricks uh, Delta sharing, and another one was the open sharing method. We would be able to share any Delta tables that we have in our, uh, you know, da Databricks Unity Catalog Metastore to any external or internal user. I think that's all for the demo. I hope that, you know, uh, this might be helping you in implementing your use case. Uh, thank you so much for joining.